All tanks are seeing a lot more playtime this season, and with just one on each team, it's really useful to be able to counter them to give yourself a way better chance of winning. Oftentimes, it's just one pick that will give the enemy tank a really difficult time, and all roles are able to do it. Here are three counters for every tank. One tank, one DPS, and one support. There's a lot of heroes mentioned here, so make sure to check out the link in the description to get access to a Game League membership. There are tons of guides covering all roles in depth, with extensive hero guides covering ultimate usage, positioning, and the best way to carry your team. Use that link if you're interested, and enjoy the video. Starting with D.Va, the damage dealer that gives her the hardest time is definitely Symmetra. It's a simple interaction, with her beam going through her defense matrix easily, and with her extra health, she has a lot of ways to survive a D.Va engage that is really difficult for other heroes. She even has some extra counterplay to the self-destruct, able to teleport herself and her allies out of harm's way, and even aggressively to push the pilot D.Va to punish aggressive D.Va bomb usage. Sim can also push in or play back, since both ways work against D.Va, forcing her to either run away or defending her den with turrets, making it impossible for her to push in without getting beamed to death. Next to counter D.Va is Junker Queen. Normally, Zarya would be the go-to, but with her being a little less strong, Queen is a better alternative who's also really good into most matchups right now. With her shotgun shots and knife, there's a lot for the Diva to worry about matrixing, and anytime the two are in close range, the Queen will almost always win. She can build a crazy amount of bleed healing on the Diva and staying alive herself with her small hitbox, and with a commanding shot on top of it, there's gonna be no way to get Diva's maximum damage on that rapidly moving small target with your shotguns. Throwing the knife randomly will definitely set you back in the matchup, but whenever Diva tries to fly past you, it's super easy to hit her with the knife and pull her right back in for axe range to punish her aggression. And for support, Brigitte is the anti-dive queen, with her ripshot being perfect for messing up the momentum for a Diva flying aggression. Aggressively. Not only is her shield optimal for blocking the burst damage with the micro missiles, but it's super easy to gain Inspire on the D.Va, since she can't block the whip shot, and anytime she's in close range, Brig can slap her for free. Then shield bash backwards whenever she wants to. Boop effect against D.Va flight really mess her up, like smacking a fly and disorienting them, and whip shot is one of the best ones for stopping D.Va. Now for Doomfist, who's obviously most countered by the robot built to defeat him, Orisa. Orisa's matchup into Doomfist isn't really difficult at all, and because of her high damage and body blocking potential, being able to stay alive in the front line forever, she'll almost always be able to stun Doomfist block and set him up for a ton of burst damage. If the Doom goes deep as well, it's really to go for the spear and then use your javelin spin to block his healing, and still have your fortified spare to get the rest of his team at bay. She's the obvious choice, and it's really easy to pull off, but Junker Queen is also a solid option if you don't want to be super cringe, since her constant damage and knife pressure is a lot to deal with as a dive tank. For support, Iliadi is super hard to kill as Doomfist, and she can deal a healthy amount of damage to him as well. Because of the charge mechanic on her primary fire, it's easy to avoid feeding the power block, and whenever the Doomfist engages you, if your pylon is set up, it's going to heal you up for a great amount, as long as you're ready for it. Doomfist struggles to kill pylon, and the longer he has to fight for, the less likely he'll get the kill. So if you avoid giving him his empowered punch and stay near your pylon, you can stay alive for a seriously long time. You'll even have your outburst to boop him away with some ability too, to get some distance, messing up his engagement almost every time. For another obvious counter, Sombra is still the go-to to ruin the Doomfist experience, but it's important to not fully focus on him, since he's totally capable of going full balls to the wall into your backline, catching you off guard and leaving you unprepared. Switching between frontline, hacking him aggressively, playing defensive to punish, and going for his own backline as well are all really important to balance, but if you even try just a little bit, it'll put a ton of pressure on not just the Numphys, but his entire team. Junker Queen Brigitte has always been a great option to counter her, even at her release, where Brig was the ideal option to both kite away from the Queen and boop her to mess her up. One well-placed whip shot and the awareness to shield bash away is more than you need to survive a commanding shot engage and the carnage slash. Her rally is also a great option to help your team survive a team-wide anti-heal, since overhealth is the only thing that can heal you up while under the effects of the ramp. Even the option of stunning the queen as she goes for the ultimate, so stay ready and reactive to make that clutch play. Junker Queen is a strong hero, but remarkably struggles into a good Roadhog, given the two teams both have strong healers. A hog with a healer behind him will have infinite chances to hook the Junker Queen into his team, and even if he's a big feeder, he won't be for long, and especially Queen's Rampage is very easy to read and cancel with your reliable hook. Ironically, the smallest tank still dies to Roadhog pretty easy, and without a stun on your side, Roadhog becomes pretty invincible if you don't handle it well enough. Queen can also literally do nothing against Whole Hog, and while it's the same for a lot of other tanks, when being flung around the map both into the enemy team and away from them, it can really disrupt your flow. For a more classic option, Oris is a safe bet, but Queen does have a lot of ways to play slow and poke her out, winning out in the Jigglebeak War even if the Javelin stun and spin give her some trouble. And for DPS, Cassidy is a simple answer. Being a sharpshooter, he's one of the characters who benefits a lot from tapping heroes like Queen in the head, among other tanks like Zarya or even Orisa with noticeable protruding head hitboxes. The hindering effect on his magnetic grenade is also perfect to not only slow her engage down, but straight up cancel her ultimate. It doesn't happen often, but just like with Brig, if you're ready for it, you can save your team from an otherwise pretty effective ult. Now for Orisa, who's one of the most uncounterable heroes in the entire game, but luckily she'd be nominating for so long that finally there are some pretty reliable picks against her. Starting off with the tank head-to-head, -head, Sigma isn't getting more played for nothing, since he's one of the few heroes who can take space without being stopped by Orisa, being the other long-range tank along with his accretion to pressure Orisa into using her fortify, as well as being able to easily hit her with his high damage hyperspheres because of her ginormous hitbox. It's not a hard counter, but the fact that he can completely outrange her and force her to make a move is something to be respected, because no other tank can really do that to her at all. She's able to soak close range damage and dish it back, but at long range she's finally bested. Just don't get your flux cancelled by spear and you'll be good to go. For damage heroes, Sochrin benefits from both her survivability to dodge Orisa's aggressive phases, as well as the solid ability to build Railgun Charge off her fortify really fast, letting her 
use rail shots more often even when Orissa is soaking damage in the front line. Her disruptive shot is also great for brushing her in strong corners, and with projectile primary fire, just like Sigma, she gets maximum value and damage out of shooting Orissa, who doesn't have a shield to slow down her railgun charge rate either. And finally, support. And while most of them don't interact with Orissa that much or are equally killable to her, Iliari does have an edge on her, having her outburst to escape her when she gets too close and dealing critical damage to her in both of their effective ranges. Not only does Iliari have a 10 meter high effective range, but her pylon is also there to help when the Orissa gets close, making it much harder for her to focus fire on Iliari, whose hitbox is already pretty small. An honorable mention goes to Lifeweaver, who can counter Orissa's Terror Surge in a pretty niche way. And while it happens rarely, it's a great pick for a hero that otherwise can easily escape her effective range with his pedal platform and rejuvenating dash. On to Ramatra, who is also weak to Sojourn's rail charge. 75% damage reduction is nothing to Sojourn, who keeps building rail shots and firing them away at his team. And once again, he has the big hitbox to suffer more during his nemesis form. Even if his shield doesn't give her a lot of charge, it also means that during the entire fight, her charge won't be decaying, always having something to shoot at. And defensively, she can easily escape the clutches of the Ravenous Vortex, since her slide is way too fast to be affected by the slow and able to jump away even further after exiting it. For the supports, Anna has the easiest time countering Ram, with her two basic abilities, Biotic Nade and Sleep Dart. It's really easy to hit your sleep on Ram's nemesis form, and for when Annihilation comes online, all you have to do is not get your sleep bitted out, and he'll have to play way more carefully to not get his ultimate completely wasted. The Biotic Nade anti-heal effect also completely stops him from punching, since his big hitbox means he can only really keep the pressure up with a healer helping him walk aggressively. It's not a lot of healing that he needs most of the time, but shutting it off completely means he has to block, since dropping his arms means he'll be blasted with damage that can't be healed back for half of his entire nemesis form. For the tank matchup, even though Orisa is quite good at handling him, Joker Queen has a really chill matchup as well, since every time Ram wants to go aggressive, he'll face being pulled in deep rather than speared out, and in melee range, Queen can get all the healing she wants. He's also got a big head hitbox up close, making it easy for Queen to get maximum damage into him, and he's also very vulnerable to both a knife pull and a rampage when his form is about to end, which is pretty easy to play around. Now for Reinhardt, who's a pretty rough hero to play as, can also be really annoying to play into when his shield is up all the time. To help break it down and also punish him when he wants to go aggressive, Zenyatta is the best pick to really tilt him into submission. With a snap kick passive, Reinhardt will struggle to win duels against you, and with a discord on him every time he tries to push, he'll be taking way more burst damage making it hard to get those split second hammer swings that he can barely get off without dying. Managing your health and damage is really difficult on Reinhardt, and if you've now got that discord debuff on your head, it makes it even more tough. For tanks, there are a couple that can break his shield effectively, but Doomfist follows up with the anti-aggression against Ryan while being able to dive the enemy backline whenever he pleases. Because he can charge up his punch instantly, it's really difficult to counter charge for Reinhardt, and he's really flexible in the duel, able to commit or leave at any moment and similarly to Winston, he can drop the duel entirely and just wipe backline, who only have the peeling capability of a body blocker that's spending most of the time ahead of the team rather than inside it. Finally, one of the flying DPS has to be here to counter Reinhardt, and it's Echo rather than Farah, who's definitely been having more of a rough time lately. Farah is also just a bit easier to handle than Echo since she's always got the same spam levels, just shooting rockets, but Echo can switch from spamming the shield down at a solid 153 DPS to lasering in for an assassination on either the Reinhardt himself or the team behind him. Sticky bombs are rough to deal with and Echo always has the option to copy the Reinhardt to hit him with an even harder diff if you want to get down to it. Without his rework, Rodog is pretty vulnerable to a lot of things, but it's worth going over if you happen to struggle against him. Without Orisa, it's pretty tough to deal with him. Since his stun is pretty important to be able to cancel his heal in the front line, with two abilities able to block hook, it's pretty difficult to get punished yourself. The only thing you really need to watch out for is using your ultimate when he has his. It's the fastest way to get sent back to the spawn room. If a hog is living for a long time consistently, he'll be building his ult up really often, but you can force it by using your ultimate to pull him in, then firing it as soon as possible and using your spin to survive. But Narissa is just the bare minimum to counter Roadhog, and with a Kiriko, he has a second barrier defense to getting caught without his heal, so Anna has to be there to apply the constant threat of anti-heal. And with a lower cooldown than Suzu on your nade, if you keep pressuring him on top of the option to sleep him out of his heal or to punish him while he's sleeping, you'll get the kill eventually and run over his whole team. And for the DPS, Sombra with her new rework is even better to punish Roadhog, being able to consistently fight him in the front line with her threat of hack to cancel his healing, as well as a new and improved gun to blast him in the head and the virus to deal 100 free damage. She's simply still a great tank killer, and when the tank has just one defensive ability that has no way to defend against hack, he's gonna struggle quite a bit. Sigma is a way stronger hero than Roadhog, but he's got his fair share of counters to make the matchup a lot easier. And these three heroes come as kind of a package deal, with Reinhardt as a tank, Symmetra as a DPS, and Lucio as a support. Together they will steal Mero Sigma on most comps he plays with but separately they're still good. Reinhardt may not be able to take crazy space without Lucio, but Sigma literally cannot force him out of defensive positions alone. With just no consistent damage on shield and no way to hit rocks on him consistently, Ryan's got the matchup no problem, and while he might lose to the rest of Sigma's team, he's usually not the problem at all. And because Sigma can't backline trade like other heroes with low shield damage can, he's gonna have a tough time getting value when faced with the Reinhardt special. Symmetra's here again, and while she can shoot through Sigma's kinetic grasp, it's a combination of that and his shield that makes her strong into him, able to laser him consistently to the point where he can't even effectively kite when he's entered her range. Her turrets are also a big pain to clear for him, because he's got such high damage potential with each volley, using them on turrets is not only difficult but a waste of time. And finally, Lucio, who can speed anybody in aggressively to surround 
Count Sigma, who's only able to defend himself in a static location, and pushing him out of that zone will make him crazy more killable. And Lucio himself is basically invulnerable to getting hit by Sigma's shots, since only the top 10 Sigmas of all time will consistently be able to hit shots on a Lucio while riding around, with at least a good amount of practice. Sound Barrier also happens to be a perfect counter to Flux, not even allowing the secondary effect of lifting people up to one-shot them in the air to work. For Winston, even though he's already not played very much, one of the reasons is that it's pretty easy to counter him. Diva and Queen are solid options for tanks, but if you have total tunnel vision on him, Roadhog is the way to go. Roadhog is just the ultimate troll against Winston, with an ultimate that completely counters his own and that just straight up melts him in the neutral, and he's basically unkillable no matter what when it's just a Winston left. He may not be very good right now, but the rework is going to change that, and he'll be just as effective against Winston as he's always been. Brigitte comes back to be just as annoying to Winston as she is to D.Va, and while her shield can be shot through, so can Winston's, meaning she'll always get inspired when the engage is happening. Winston has some options to play against Brig, but on similar skill levels, the Brig should always be able to boop the Winston, since the only way he can block it is with his bubble, meaning he won't be able to drop the bubble on the back line at the end of his jump, making his engage a lot more dangerous as well as not being able to block any healing. And for DPS, Bastion is the obvious answer. And even outside of his turret form, he's a threat to deal with, able to poke Winston down to low health before he even goes for the dive. And yeah, against the turret form, Winston melts like ice cream in a microwave. It's a rough time for the big man. Wrecking Ball also has the same DPS weakness, but with the addition of Sombra to dunk on him as she always has. Sombra is just a bit less strong, with a rework making her more chaseable than before, but Bastion is definitely a total mess to try to deal with. Although Ball has amazing boot potential against non tanks with low mobility, Bastion has both the raw damage output to melt Ball's planet sized hitbox and the grenade to disrupt his movement. As for the tanks, Junker Queen probably has the best matchup into him with her commanding shout completely countering his power driver engage. With the perfectly sized target to always do maximum damage with her shotgun, she has enough killing pressure on him to force him away most of the time. Her knife is also ideal for not only pulling him back after his engage to stop his escape, but to pull him away from his setup, since trying to dive with your team with the threat of being pulled after 3 seconds is pretty impossible. And for supports, Lucio is actually just a bit better than Brig at peeling him away from your team, and with his healing aura combined with his amp it up, he can shrug off even the best power driver engage with no problem. An honorable mention goes to Zenyatta, whose discord makes it super hard for the ball to play the game, but you definitely need to be a solid zen player to pull it off. The best counter to Ball is a good Zen for sure, but they're pretty rare nowadays even in GM1. And finally, for Zarya, she doesn't have a lot of interaction with supports, being able to mostly laser them, even Lucio not being too hard to hit and kill with high energy. But Lifeweaver is the ultimate counter, with both his tree and pedal platform being able to completely counter her Graviton Surge. The Grav is already hard to pull off with so many ways to counter it, and with such a low cooldown and such a powerful countering effect, the pedal platform is pretty insane for stopping it. Echo is back to counter another tank with one of the best matchups in Tazaria, not only being unkillable most of the time in the air, but a duplicate on Tazaria is one of the most effective tank copies right now, taking space at a crazy rate and also being able to bubble your normal tank for a little bit of nostalgia. And finally for the tank matchup, Winston is the most consistent at not giving Zarya any charge, being able to consistently pressure her, and also being able to completely ignore her and pressure her backline. Zarya's bubbles pale in comparison to Winston's, since the biggest waste of Zarya's high damage and long reload is shooting shields, and Winston's bubble is one of the better ones. That's it for 3 counters for every tank. With so many different ways to counter tanks for every role, it should help a lot if you feel yourself struggling specifically against one tank matchup pretty often. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.